Hi, I'm Bob Odenkirk. And I'm Patrick Fabian. Hi, I'm Giancarlo Esposito. And I'm Ray Seahorn. And I'm Michael Mando. We're some of the cast members of Better Call Saul. We will now attempt to recap the past three seasons as quickly as possible. Just do this. Ready, the second. series begins with a flash forward after the events of Breaking Bad. If you don't know what happens on that show, you're watching the wrong recap. Albuquerque's most notorious criminal lawyer, Saul Goodman, is on the run from the law, working at Cinnabon in Omaha, Nebraska, and going by the name Gene. Back 2002. Before the events of Breaking Bad, Saul's a public defender working under his real name, Jimmy McGill. He's barely scraping by, and his home slash office is in the back of a nail salon. He's got an older brother, Chuck, who's an esteemed lawyer and name partner at Hamlin, Hamlin and McGill, HHM. Chuck Chuck has confined himself to his house due to an affliction called electromagnetic hypersensitivity. Going out into the world causes him pain, so Chuck relies on daily assistance from Jimmy. HHM is headed by Howard Hamlin, whom Jimmy thinks of as Darth Vader with a snazzy haircut and a knit tie. Also working at HHM is up and coming attorney Kim Wexler, with whom Jimmy has been known to sneak a cigarette or two at HHM's parking garage. Speaking of parking, across town is another familiar face from Breaking Bad, one Mike Ermintrout. Former Philly cop and future right-hand man to Kingpin Gus Fring. For now, he counts stickers and gives the undervalidated Jimmy McGill a hard time. What's he doing here? We'll get into that in a second. But first, Jimmy finally gets his big break. A meeting with a big fish of a client, Craig Kettleman, the county treasurer accused of embezzling $1.6 million. Unfortunately, Mr. Kettleman and his wife think they'd look guilty if they hired a guy like Jimmy, so they take their business to HHM instead. Undeterred, Jimmy recruits a pair of red-haired skateboarding twins to help him win the Kettleman's back, but the plan goes over. Rye and the twins end up on the bad side of spoiler alert, Tuco Salamanca, the crazy volatile tight, 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 tight drug dealer you may remember from Breaking Bad. Jimmy has to use his lawyer skills to argue Tuco down from killing the twins to one broken leg each. Now that's getting a leg up. Later, Tuco's cunning associate Nacho shows up at the nail salon. He heard Jimmy talk about the Kettlemans, and now Nacho wants to steal the money they embezzled. When the Kettlemans go missing, the cops blame Nacho, but Jimmy finds them, spoiler alert, hiding out in the woods with their ill-gotten gains. Jimmy accepts $30,000 to keep quiet and invest by the way of a billboard for James Morgan McGill or JMM to drive business and stick it to Mr. Howard Hamlin. A judge forces Jimmy to take the billboard down. When Jimmy saves a construction worker who falls off the billboard in the process, he becomes a local hero. <laughs> Business picks up. Jimmy tries his hand at elder law. Need a will? Call McGill. Oh. Meanwhile, a couple detectives from Philly show up to question Mike. His son, Matt, was a police officer who died in the line of duty, and now two other cops have been killed. They're investigating the case. Mike admits to his daughter-in-law, Stacy, the deceased cops in question were dirty. And that, spoiler alert, Matt was murdered because he was incorruptible, unlike his dad. Mike got revenge and killed these two bad cops before leaving Philadelphia. Mike hires Jimmy to help get the internal repairs cops off his back, and in return, Turn, Jimmy asks Mike for a favor. Kim is in hot water at HHM after the Kettlemans fired her because they didn't like the plea deal she negotiated. So Jimmy needs Mike to find their hidden stash and return it to the DA's office, including Jimmy's $30,000, which Kim definitely does not know about. It's the right thing to do and puts Kim back on Howard's good side. But now Jimmy is even worse off than before. That is until he discovers that the assisted living facility sent by for crossing is grossly overcharging its residents. It's a massive legal case, and oh. Chuck convinces him to take it to HHM. But Jimmy is shot. Spoiler alert! To find that the firm only wants the case, not him. Chuck has been working against him. He confronts his brother, who admits that he thinks of Jimmy as the legal equivalent of a chimp with a machine gun. Jimmy is devastated and severs ties with his brother. Kim finds out that HHM is partnering with the firm Davis and Maine on the Sandpiper case and influences them to hire Jimmy. But Jimmy turns it down? Confused. Kim tracks him down to a hotel where he's lounging under a false name. He convinces her to pull a scam with him. <laughs> And after a fun night as Victor and Giselle, Jimmy and Kim make a love connection. And he has a change of heart and takes the job. Jimmy throws his newfound stability into jeopardy when he gets a call from Mike, who wants to know if he's still morally flexible. Mike had been helping this guy, Daniel Warmold, aka Price, with the yellow Humvee, sell prescription drugs to Nacho. But then Price got too flashy driving around in a blinged out Hummer. Nacho cut his losses and stole Price's stash, including his beloved baseball card collection. Mike will deal with Nacho, but he needs Jimmy's help to get the cops off Price's back. Jimmy weaves a tale of scorned artist and amorous pie sitting, though he has to fabricate evidence to make the story stick. Jimmy, no! Back at his day job, Jimmy is having trouble reaching Sandpiper residents, so he goes rogue and produces a commercial he knows they will see. It works, but his bosses are furious. And over at HHM, Kim is in the doghouse again for not warning Howard about Jimmy's unsanctioned endeavor. Meanwhile, Mike wants to move his granddaughter to a safer neighborhood, so he takes a job helping Nacho get rid of Tuco, who's gotten more erratic since he started hitting crystal meth. Nacho's ready for a permanent and deadly solution, but Mike has a better plan. He 
provoked, spoiler alert, Tuco into pulling a gun on him. Tuco's arrested, but not before he beats the hell out of Mike. Things get worse for Mike when Tuco's uncle, Hector Tio Salamanca, asked him to say that Tuco's gun was his. Mike refuses until the cartel threatens his granddaughter's life. He agrees to claim the gun, but Mike's not done with the Salamancas. He ambushes one of Hector's delivery trucks, stealing cartel's profits. The thrill of his victory is dampened when Nacho tells him that, spoiler alert, Hector murdered a good Samaritan that found the truck's driver who might left alive. Mike trails Hector to the desert with the intention of killing him, but as he sets up his shot, spoiler alert, he's pulled away by the sound of his own car horn blaring. He returns to his vehicle to find a mysterious message on the windshield. Don't. Don't. Back at HHM, Kim works overtime and lands a new client, Mesa Verde Bank and Trust. This should put her back in the firm's good graces, but Howard continues to give her the cold shoulder. When her opposing counsel in the Sandpiper case, Rich Schweiker, 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 Schweiker Sh offers Sh her a job Schweiker. with his team, Kim is tempted to accept. Pondering her options, Kim reaches out to Jimmy and Victor and Giselle reunite for another con. Now that he knows that Kim is willing to leave HHM, Jimmy sees a golden opportunity. If he can get himself out of his Davis and Maine contract, he and Kim can open a practice together. Huh. Jimmy gets himself fired with the help of some vivacious suits and a set of bagpipes. He proposes the partnership to Kim, but she turns him down, then comes back with a counterproposal. Two firms under one roof. She can do things her way, he can get creative. Plus, she's already locked down her first client, Mesa Verde. However, HHM has no intention of letting Mesa Verde go. In a rare venture out of the house, spoiler alert, <gasps> Chuck swoops in and charms him right back into HHM. Kim is devastated. Jimmy is angry. He sneaks into Chuck's house and tampers with his files, causing a huge setback to the bank's expansion. Chuck is humiliated, and Mesa Verde returns to Kim. Chuck knows Jimmy sabotaged him, but needs proof. Chuck plays detective, intending to crack the case, but instead cracks his head. Feeling guilty, Jimmy visits his brother and finds Chuck pretending to be relapsed with an aluminum foil heavy home makeover. Worried that Chuck is on the verge of a breakdown, spoiler alert, Jimmy admits he altered the documents. Little does he know that Chuck has recorded his confession. <sighs> but who left Mike that note? Mike discovers a tracking device in his car, so he buys his own identical device and turns the tables, which leads Mike to lost Hoyos Hermanos and Gus Frank, Breaking Bad's favorite restaurateur, who also happens to be a major distributor to the cartel. Gus lures Mike to a remote spot to meet him face to face to advise him that he can't let Mike kill Hector. But, spoiler alert! He helps him get one of Hector's trucks busted at the border, shutting down Hector's supply chain. Gus also sets Mike up to launder the money he stole from Hector. By hiring him as a security consultant for Madrigal. Electromotive. What a guy. What a guy! Across town, Jimmy discovers that Chuck taped his confession. He kicks down the door of his brother's house and destroys the tape, not realizing he's fallen into a trap. Chuck has Jimmy arrested and Kim steps up to defend him, they soon discover that Chuck's real goal is to get Jimmy disbarred. When Chuck testifies against Jimmy at the bar, Marine Jimmy reveals <laughs> that a fully charged battery was planted on Chuck and his brother didn't notice the electromagnetism, thus revealing his condition to be in Chuck's head. Chuck snaps and shows the court how much animosity he holds for his brother. Jimmy's license is suspended for only a year and Chuck finally seeks help for his condition. Meanwhile, Nacho has family drama on his own. In order to free himself and his father from the cartel's clutches, he devises a plan to switch out Hector's heart medication for something less effective. The next time Hector works himself into a fury, he swallows the placebos, but they're no help. He collapses, and Nacho is hopeful until Gus jumps into action and saves Hector's life. But they're enemies. What is he doing? What is he doing? What's he doing? Unable to practice law, Jimmy can't hold up his half of Wexler McGill. He tries to get a refund on his malpractice insurance, but his request is denied. Jimmy then takes this opportunity to stick it to Chuck by letting the insurance agent know what happened to Chuck in court. She takes note. Still worried about money, Jimmy visits his former client, Mrs. Mrs. Landry to see if the Sandpiper case might be settling soon. He discovers she was made a handsome offer. One that would net Jimmy a big oh. chunk of change. Cha ching He sees she's hesitant to accept it, so he manipulates her friends into uh, ostracizing her uh, and then blames it on the delayed settlement. Mrs. Landry agrees to take the offer, even though her lawyers, Jimmy's former firm, want her to hold out. Jimmy wants to celebrate his windfall with Kim, but she's insanely busy now. I'm insanely busy. Now she's staking on a second client, Gatewood Oil. She's running herself ragged, and on the way to a big meeting, Boom. she suffers a near fatal she suffers a near fatal car accident. It's one hell of a wake up call, so Kim refers Gatwood to Schweiker and takes some time to consider her future. She and Jimmy <laughs> agree to give up the office they've been fighting so hard, so hard to keep together. At HHM, Howard and Chuck find out that their insurance is going up because of Chuck and Jimmy. Howard floats the idea of Chuck retiring, and when he refuses, Howard is forced to <laughs> buy Chuck out. Kim's accident gives Jimmy a new perspective, and he visits Chuck, ready to make amends. He's shocked to see the lights in the house are on, and Chuck seems okay. Okay? But, well, however. Chuck is okay? Yeah, but he is. Chuck rejects Jimmy's olive branch, claiming his brother never mattered much to him. Stung, Jimmy leaves. He goes to visit Mrs. Landry and learns her friends are still icing her out. So helping to set things right, he accidentally <laughs> confesses that he manipulated her into settling, and Mrs. Landry gets her pals back. But Jimmy will definitely never be working in Elder Law 
dog and never, no way. Never, Having isolated himself from HHM, Howard, and now Jimmy, Chuck relapses. He tears apart his house desperately trying to remove any shred of electricity. He sits alone, wrapped in a space blanket, kicking a table. Kicking a table on which a single gas lantern burns. The lantern topples over. Spoiler alert! The house goes up in flames. Oof. And that's where things left off on Better Call Saul! <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Is it a comedy or a drama? Who knows, but watch.